so in this second part of the lecture we are going to discuss about the functions of various slip form components one by one so to begin with we'll take the first component that is called as the sheathing so we'll understand what is the function of the sheathing so in this picture you can see this gray one that is called as the sheathing so this function of the sheathing is to contain and provide the shape to the concrete so it also helps to maintain the correct profile of the structure which needs to be slip formed so if you see this diagram the sheathing along with this horizontal member which is shown in the red color we call it as the veins it resists the, the concrete pressure so the sheathing along with the veils resist the lateral pressure of the concrete so maybe the first time some of you must be hearing this word sheathing so you may be like thinking what is the sheathing see sheathing is nothing but this could be a timber or it could be a metal that means it could be the plywood it could be metal it could be glass fiber reinforced plastic or the combination of these materials so the sheathing the main function of the sheathing is to give the uh, shape to the concrete that is it's it is the main function is to contain and to give the shape to the concrete surface so, so that's all about the sheathing now let us move on to the second component that is called as the veils so the veils are used for uh, supporting and holding the sheathing in place so they transmit the lifting forces from the hydraulic jacks to the sheathing and to the other elements of the forms so, so the veils is also used to provide the support to the various working platforms and the scaffolding as you can see in this picture so that's all about the veils the third component is yoke so if you see this yoke it consists of the yoke legs as you see in this picture here and it consists of yoke beams so yoke means its yoke assembly consists of yoke beam and the yoke legs so uh, this yokes what they do is they support these veils at regular intervals with their legs and they transmit the lifting force from the jack to the veils and they resist them this lateral pressure of the concrete which is within the forms so as i said it has got the two components that is yoke legs so you can see the there are two yoke legs are there and this function of the yoke leg is to lift this slip form structure as one integral unit so it transfers the lifting reactions to the jacks and this yoke leg also act as the main connecting member for this working platforms or walkway platforms this mason scaffolds or hanging scaffolds and also for the yoke beams as you're seeing here and the top platforms so the next component is yoke beams so yoke beam as you see here which is in the blue color this is the main connecting member between the inside and outside of the yoke legs so generally two yoke beams are connected at the bottom portion of the yoke legs and single yoke beam is connected at the top portion and you can see the jacks the hydraulic jacks are mounted on this yoke beams as you can see here it is mounted on the yoke beams and the yoke beam Beams, they transfer the, the lifting forces of the jacks to the yoke legs that's all about the yoke assembly now moving on to the fourth component that is hydraulic jacks so you can clearly you can see the picture of hydraulic jacks so these jacks are installed on the yoke beams and they climb on this jacking rod and they provide the force which is needed to the raise this entire slip form system and uh, the jacks if you see they will be like located at uh, equal intervals uh, to enable this lifting of the slip form as one integral unit and the capacity of the jacks it depends upon what is the reaction at the point of the loading and uh, talking about the capacity of the jacks uh, we have uh, different capacities like three ton we have then we have six tons is there and then we have 12 ton capacity jacks are available 
so if you see like uh, this uh, but mostly like we go for using this 3 ton and 6 ton capacity jacks so the 6 ton capacity jacks is mainly used for high rise tapered structures where the required lifting load is very heavy and the 3 ton uh, slip form hydraulic jacks is used for the straight structures where the load is normal so that's all about the hydraulic jacks so now we'll move on to the next component that is uh, one second so we'll move on to the next component which is called as the the jacking rod so as you can see here this jacking rod we can call by an another name that is called as the climbing rod and if you see these rods are located centrally in the wall which needs to be cast and also at the the equidistance from the yoke beam so at the equal distance from the yoke beam and uh, uh, these jack rods they are also available in different diameters and if you see they are available in the diameters like 48 mm and then we have uh, uh, 32 mm and then we have 25 mm so we uh, can choose the diameters depending upon the capacity of the jacks so this uh, lifting jacks they climb over the jacking rods so the entire load of the slip form assembly is transferred to the jacking rod when the jacks are energized and uh, if you want to like you know that is extract this uh, jacking rods so what we can do is uh, like you can have a thin pipe or like you know tapered tube sleeve it can be placed around this jacking rod for about one meter depth from the concrete surface and it is attached to the yoke so this way what happens that sleeve forms a hole for the jacking rod to stand freely as the form moves so after the completion of this uh, you know sliding process this jacking rod can be pulled out so that's all about the jacking rod or the climbing rod so apart from these components we also have the working decks or the storage decks so which you can uh, just clearly you can see that working decks in this picture here so this uh, various platforms like the working platforms decks top decks scaffoldings they complete the slip form system so these provide the shape for i mean uh, a space for storing the concrete reinforcing steel embedments as well as they serve the, as the working area for placing and finishing so now talking about this uh, uh, working platform as you can see in this picture here this walkway platforms are given both on the inside and the outside and they are used for placing the concrete for tying the reinforcement for doing the vibrations fixing the inserts block outs pockets so, so all this inside and outside brackets they are connected to the respective yoke legs by means of the pins and for the easy erection and dismantling along with the, the pipe struts to support the cantilever portion the next component is hydraulic pumps so the function of the hydraulic pump is to circulate uh, the required quantity of hydraulic oil uh, at the required pressure for energizing this hydraulic jacks to lift the assembly so the pumps also facilitates the uniform lifting of the assembly so that's all about the hydraulic pumps and the last one is hanging scaffolds that is inside and outside mason scaffold so this uh, scaffolds are meant for curing and that is for doing the finishing operations uh, that is finishing the exposed to concrete and carrying out the necessary repairs and treatments if it is required and also they are also used for exposing that uh, you know inserts dowels etc if it is required so that's all about the various functions of this slip form components